Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about creativity. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what does it mean to be a creative or a creative programmer? Uh, I'm not sure if we understand each other now because like I don't really know this term like being a cre I mean being creative uh, you know, of course I understand that term as more you say this as as if this is some type of saying like you know if you say something like rockstar programmer for example well that's a term that a lot of people throw around or superstar programmer etc etc that's something that I would know but a creative programmer well uh, I'm just going to guesstimate what you mean here and go and say that well it kind of depends on who's judging um, it's kind of it's one of them terms where you with experience you read between the lines um, so the closest thing I can associate this to is you know when a uh, when a job posting says uh, we are looking for a rockstar developer something like that must be able to handle stress if it says must be able to handle stress, you can translate that into that it's an entire shit show in that company and they probably have uh, so much legacy and so many issues and so sharp deadlines that most people have quit or someone has quit because they simply cannot deal with the chaos of the whole thing. And the same thing goes for must have good people skills, etc, etc. And that is also one of those red flags where it kind of goes, you know, as soon as I read that, I immediately go, oh, that's going to be fun. They're most likely filled up, they've filled up the company with people they can't get rid of that have poor people skills. And now they're trying to figure out, now they're only trying to hire people who can work with these, I don't know what to call them, socially inept people. Uh, it's usually the it's usually the sort of person it's usually this sort of thing usually happens when it's like a founder of the company or a very important person of some sort that is like a major pain in the ass in for everybody else and has multiple complaints on them but for reasons you can't get rid of them and i've worked for companies for, for like that where i swear to god that I am completely convinced that they had a full-time other person working there and the only function of that person was to mitigate all the damage one of the founders of that company was causing to the company uh, socially because that person like they put that guy through training sensitivity shit like everything and it, you know he was still an asshole to basically everybody who didn't agree with him uh, and being, I think that this thing being a creative programmer is a similar sort of thing where it depends on, you know, if somebody says I'm looking for a creative DevOps person, it, what I would do is I would translate that to, oh, I need, we need to find, we have this massive, super weird, bad system and we need a talented DevOps person to kind of, that knows basically everything and that in some magical way can come in here and save us from our own mess. Uh, by having quote unquote creative solutions to our massive super problem. Uh, but it could also mean that, you know, they are looking for people who are not code monkeys. Not being a code monkey is also, you know, that's something that could be interpreted as being a creative programmer. Uh, it could also mean that they need some more software developers who are full of ideas because they all all as I was saying they might not be looking for a code monkey because they could probably have multiple code monkeys and they've realized that we need to supply we need to um, create a more holistic team a bit more well-rounded team if that makes sense because it's actually really easy usually to find code monkeys uh, now you know for full disclosure finding any software developer worth their salt is enormously complicated it is really hard to find anybody who can do even basic coding uh, well enough at like at the professional level. Finding someone who does a hello world app like we're drowning in those people, but the uh, the people who actually can do the job is very rare. But it's even rarer to find a software developer who's actually driven like these sorts of rock star programmers that you keep on hearing about uh, on the job postings and on tech talks and recruiters talk about them and so forth uh, these people are usually one in a thousand or one in a hundred or something like that and uh, 
because the people that you usually get are people who really are just there to clock in be told what to do and I kind of just churn away at their code uh, and unfortunately for most of IT uh, that's kind of you you need people like that but you need at least a few people at the very least that have ideas and are these creative types because otherwise you're you're not going to be able to trust that your software team is going to be able to bridge the on average uh, complete incompetency of everybody around the software team so this is in my opinion the, the like the, the biggest problem with a lot of IT with uh, basically all of IT because uh, it's a very technical field and in order for you to develop s digital products you actually basically have to be a software developer to understand it fully to, to, to the full extent that it's necessary but unfortunately we don't really have a education system where you have non-technical stakeholders with all the business ideas and so forth where, where it's really hard to educate a person to be a business person and a fully fledged software developer it is extraordinarily hard and since that's not really possible that's why we have this emphasis that okay we'll try to figure this out by having really good software engineers who can kinda communicate and come with ideas and tips and so forth and then you have business people and then they work together in, a, in harmony and complement each other and that's really difficult you you would think that that would be easy but it's probably the hardest thing there is in in that business engineering dynamic to make people understand each other to communicate to make them like realize that uh, we cannot only focus on product development and we cannot only focus on engineering and finding that balance and that is where a creative programmer or a rockstar programmer or someone like that is extremely useful because if you are a creative type you are the sort of person who can actually come with the technical perspective because it's usually very easy to find business people or people within management or so forth that have a lot of ideas on how to do product development because you know we're drowning in those people as well everybody has a business idea usually uh, but it's very rare to find their sort of person like that counterpart in the engineering department and that is in my experience at the very least why uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of IT companies might be referring to you know programmers and having programmers that are creative so what I want you to take away from this is that well I don't know what to say a creative pro what is a creative programmer it can be well, practically anybody who has an idea. It can mean that you, if you're unlucky when they're asking for a creative programmer, they're basically asking, hey, can we get someone in here who has ideas on how to solve the problems that we have caused? And that's going to be fun for you uh, if you get into that situation. And I'm not being sarcastic there, I promise you, because the it can be horrible, but it can also be a very good learning experience. I think, that, honestly, the the worst system that I ever worked on legacy wise was also the best job in terms of my personal development that I've ever had uh, it's at that job I probably grew the most from anything I've done so far uh, well at that point at the very least uh, so don't you know don't um, ignore uh, bad system opportunities it's all about learning opportunities in my book at the very least and it can all, I mean, it can also just mean that they're looking for somebody to supplement their already existing teams of code monkeys because it's, as I said, it's very easy to find a code monkey in comparison to someone who is a rock star programmer or a, someone who even has an idea of how to improve the technical aspect of the system because as I said it's usually very easy to find product people who have a lot of ideas of how to improve the business but it's super hard to find programmers who are willing to who, who have that same sort of drive and that might be what they're talking about who knows have a great day